The Mueller Report is in. Patriots, join me. <laughs> and Patriots and Americans and curious minds that want to know, it's time to get busy. If you have some time, get off your ass right now and start diving into the Mueller Report. It's about uh, 450 pages. But don't let that scare you. Only about 500, about 50, less than 50, actually less than 50 pages are of any interest whatsoever to anybody who really understands what's going on, right? Because a lot of it is absolute nonsense. Pages, really, it's only like, there's only like 12 really, really interesting pages in the whole thing. And that's pages 36 to 48. Now, I put in the headline that, um, that, uh, that Seth Rich uh, is named as a source in WikiLeaks, right? It's it's only what we know about Seth Rich. But the, the important thing is on page 48, Seth Rich makes it. So let's dive into this uh, thing right now, just to, as a preface, right? Right now, mainstream media is spinning like crazy, trying to, trying to discredit the accusation, uh, discredit that Trump, uh, didn't collude with the Russian government, that he didn't obstruct, mostly, the, the latter, right? They, the, the collusion idea is off the table, but mainstream media, the little I watched, ABC, spinning, 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 trying to, um, trying to accuse Trump of obstruction of justice, right? Because there is no crime, but, but, but the, the crime would be a technicality. And Trump's... so. Let's not pay attention to that because, you know what, it doesn't even matter. Who cares, right? Trump has said this and he said that. Who cares? But let's just, let's just dive in, right? The most important part of it is, did the DNC, did the Russians hack the DNC and the DCCC, right? Did the Russians hack the, the, the thing, right? And Mueller's report uh, spins a wild, almost like a spycraft narrative with, in my view, what I read, very little evidence, a any substantial evidence that any of it is true. Right? So that, that's, the, that's the essence of it. Because if there was no Russian hacking inside of the DNC, then there was no Russia at all. And then that's, that's how it, it's an American, someone inside the goddamn DNC leaked it. Right? That's what we want to know. Right? That's the most important takeaway in the whole thing. So we'll go right to page 48, right? And I'll tell you, uh, we'll show you and we'll work backwards if you want. And, uh, you know, again, I'm only one person, so it's early in the game. Kindly, if you have any time on your hands or interest in helping your country, start reading because this is good stuff. Uh, so page uh, 48 uh, D, 48 D, WikiLeaks statement, December, this dissembling about the source of the stolen materials, right? Uh, as report at, uh, reports attributing the DNC and the DCC hacks to the Russian government emerged, WikiLeaks and Assange made several public statements apparently designed to obscure the source of the materials that Leaky, WikiLeaks was releasing. The file transfer evidence described above, we'll look at it, uh, and other information uncovered during the investigation discredited WikiLeaks' claims about the source of the material that it posted. Ah, not true. Not true. It didn't discredit anything, so we'll look at it. Here's where Seth Rich comes in. Beginning in summer of 2016, Assange and WikiLeaks made a number of statements about Seth Rich, a former DNC staff member who was killed in July 2016. The statement about Rich implied falsely that he had been the source of the stolen DNC emails. On August 9, 2016, the WikiLeaks Twitter accounts posted, posted announce, announce, uh, WikiLeaks has decided to issue a $20,000 reward for information leading to the conviction of, a, of the murder of DNC staffer Seth Rich. That's true, I remember that, right? So, DN, so WikiLeaks puts up 20 grand for the... Uh, as a reward, right? Likewise, on uh, August 25th, 2016, Assange was asked in an interview, quote, why are you so interested in Seth Rich's killer? Unquote. He responded, we're very interested in anything that might be a threat to alleged WikiLeaks sources. The interviewer responded to Assange's statement by commenting, quote, I know you don't want to reveal your source, 
But it certainly sounds like you're suggesting a man who leaked inf- information to WikiLeaks was then murdered, unquote. Assange said, if there's someone who, who potentially, who's potentially connected to our publication and that person has been murdered in suspicious circumstances, it doesn't necessarily mean that the two are connected. But it is a very serious matter. That type of allegation is very serious and it's, and it's taken very serious, serious by us. All right? Continue right here. After U.S. intelligence uh, community publicly announced, after the U.S. intelligence community publicly announced its assessment that Russia was behind the hacking operation, Assange continued to deny the Clinton's materials released by WikiLeaks had come from the Russian hacking. Right? According to media reports, Assange told the U.S. congressman, no name, that the DNC hack was a, quote, inside job and purported to have, quote, proof, physical proof, that the Russians did not give, inform- give materials to Assange. Uh, so, so that's the, that's the uh, Seth Rich twist. Julian Assange, the only thing that was ever stated, right, and it wasn't stated directly, that's the other thing. There, Mueller's taken secondhand information that he said, said on, on TV. I've shown you other evidence, like that one uh, video where Assange is being questioned by that Dutch reporter, and he says the same, same, not the same words, but uh, essentially the same uh, theme that Seth Rich, there's a DC, you know, a a a, DC, a DNC uh, worker was killed in D, DC and such, right? So he says it. So now. Did Russia hack the election? Did Russia hack the thing, right? Let's go back to, we got to go back to page 36. All right, and here's where it starts, all right? It's confusing and there's a lot to it, but we're just going to take it in pieces, all right? So, right, here it is on page, uh, it's page 36, the top, right? Number three, Russian hacking and dumping operations. So, just to get the definitions out of the way. Beginning in March 2016, units of Russian Federation's main intelligence uh, decorator of the general staff, just call it GRE, right? So whenever you hear GRE, that's Russia, right? Russian military, major intelligence, hack the computers and email accounts of organizations, uh, employees, and volunteers supporting the Clinton campaign including the emails, um, email accounts of campaign chairman John Podesta. Starting in April 2016, the, the Russians, GRE, hacked into the computer networks of national of the Democratic National Campaign, the DCCC, right? the committee, and the Democratic National Committee, DNC. The GRE, Russians, targeted hundreds of email accounts by Clinton campaign um, Employees, advisors, and volunteers. There's not. There hasn't been a single footnote as to where this information is coming from. In total, the GRE stole hundreds of thousands of documents from the comp- compromised email accounts and networks. Here's a here's a head uh, a footnote 109. So we go down to 109, and um, a discussion in section four below our offices. Twelve GRE officers for crimes against arising from the hacking of these computers. Right? They don't mention a single name. There has not been a single uh, a, a relevant indictment that we could see, uh, an actual physical person that, that uh, one of these goddamn Russians that hacked. So it's just, so far it's fiction. It's still, having read through the whole part of Russian hacking, it still seems like fiction, almost like Phi Psi. Uh, so the GRE later released stolen Clinton uh, campaign and DNC documents through online personas, DC Leaks and Guccifer 2.0. All right? So, and later through the uh, organization WikiLeaks. The release of the documents was designed in time to interfere with the 2016 U.S. presidential election and undermine Clinton campaign. Guaranteed, right? Because this is important. It did have an effect. These, are, these emails had a tremendous effect on the, the voter public when, 
we realized that the DNC, the content of the emails was pointing to overt cheating. They don't talk about any of the cheating or the content. All they talk about is Russia, Russia, Russia hacked into the uh, thing, right? All right, so uh, here's some business about Trump and WikiLeaks. It's, it's redacted and it doesn't mean anything. Because uh, we don't care. Russia, Trump had nothing to do with any of this because there is no Russia. Right? There is no Russia. There's nothing. So GRE units targeted the Clinton campaign, number one. Two military units of the GRE carried out the computer intrusions. I'm on, I'm on page 36 still. Intrusions into the Clinton campaign, DNC and DCC, military units 26165 and, and 74455, military units 261, right? They, they got all this spycraft shit going on. Right? Military units <laughs> is a GRE um, cyber unit dedicated to targeting military, political, and government and non-governmental organizations outside of Russia. Included in, in the United States, right? It's all just, it's fiction, really. It, it's just, it's just total fiction, right? Military units is related to GRE unit with multiple departments that engage in cyber operations. It's fucking bullshit. What kind of operations? Tell us what they did. Right? Right, to learn the investigative, uh, a couple of redactions. Beginning, it's not redacted so much. It's, it's readable. Uh, began before GRE had obtained any credentials or gained access to these networks. Uh, GRE offices also spent hundreds of... Here's, here's the deal, right? This is, this, is what, this is what we should focus on, and this is what was never solved and no one ever came forward with. GRE offices also sent hundreds of spear phishing emails to the work and personal email accounts of Clinton campaign employees and volunteers, right? Has anybody ever come forward and said, I got a phishing, I got a uh, spear phishing email? Spear phishing is something that, it's like junk email that sends it to you and says, yeah, uh, oh yeah, uh, you have to confirm your password, right? What kind of idiot responds to something like that? John, P they're, they're accusing John Podesta of responding to a, a spearhead phishing you know, he was, they were doing a fishing expedition and somebody stole his email. There's no, again, no evidence. Why? Because hundreds of people, they're saying they targeted hundreds of people, right? 90 spearhead emails right here. Uh, emails and emails to the HillaryClinton.com website, right? Nobody ever came forward, right? They also uh, sent it to the DNC.org email accounts. Do, I, do you know anybody who's ever gotten, got, that was working there that got a phishing email? Right? Because that would confirm a lot, right? Because it didn't happen. That's the point, right? What happened was two days, the, the uh, crowd strike entered the building, right? None of, none of this has ever been verified by the FBI. It doesn't really, there's really no sourcing of any, any of it, right? You don't see crowd strike mentioned at all. You don't see the FBI mentioned at all, right? The, the chain of command, the chain of uh, custody in the information is, is extremely vague, right? It's extremely vague. Let's leave it there. GRE phishing, uh, spear phishing operation uh, enabled it to gain access to numerous email accounts of Clinton campaign employees and volunteers, including campaign chairman John Podesta, junior volunteers associated, assigned to the Clinton campaign's advanced team and formal Clinton campaign advisors and a DNC employee. Who's the employee? <laughs> Redacted. <laughs> GRE officers stole tens of thousands of emails from spear phishing victims, including various Clinton campaign related communications. It's just not believable. It's just, it's just, I don't, it, I'm not buying it, man. I'm not buying it, right? And all that stuff got, I don't know who, by the way, DC leaks. Guccifer 2.0, I don't think had a, had its own, had, had its own outlet. I thought most of it went out through, through um, WikiLeaks. That's, the, that's what I, how I remember it anyway. So, just, just I guess more evidence, and I'll, I'll, I'll cut, I'll cut it short. This is not that interesting, and I, I, your, your help is needed. Dive into this stuff and tell me I'm wrong, right? Or tell me I'm right. 
By no later than April uh, 12, 2016, the, the Russians had gained access to the DNCC. Okay, so they're saying that all of my, my gist, right, as I'm reading this again for the second time, is that the, the way in which Robert Mueller is saying that the information was stolen from the DNC, the DCC, uh, and whoever else, the Gmail accounts of John Podesta and all these people were through, quote, spear phishing expeditions, meaning that they got an email and they, they were, well, oh, I don't know, I'll just I'll put in my password. I guess I'll just type in my password, right? Right. That's that's what we're supposed to believe, right? And then somehow that information was was siphoned from the Russians, who who then gave it to to Julian Assange, right? Right. That's what we're supposed to believe, right? Right. So so there's more of this stuff. There's this here. You're talking about uh, DNCC and DNC networks. Uh, two types of customized. They also saying that they they planted malware, right? Some kind of malware inside the DNC. Right? None of it is believable. I mean, where's the tech team? Where's the where's the tech team, right? Where's the people that got the phishing the phishing emails? Give me one person, right? All we got is a dead guy, right? John, uh, Seth Rich. And we don't know if he's we don't even know if he's dead, right? So what else can we talk about? There's a huge redaction on page 39. Who even knows what it means? Talking about investigative techniques. Yeah. Here's your technique, right? right. The, um, so it all leads up to, right? It's all this stuff about how they were fished, right? And it all leads up to page 48. Right? DC, DC leaks. The uh, GRU began planning the release uh, at at least as early as April 19th, uh, and they keep referencing these units, military unit, Russian military unit this, and Russian military unit that. That, uh, I mean, again, when CrowdStrike came in, it could have placed all of that on the server. Well, that's the story a second party or third party is, is, is telling because Robert Mueller, there's no, there's no evidence, there's no suggestion that they took those servers and analyzed them. There's just nothing there. It's just a story. It's just a story that we already knew, right? Right. And all the FISA reports and 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 you know FISA warrants were all based on, on on collusion and something else outside of this. That stuff doesn't bother me. Did did Trump collude with Russia? No, that's already been confirmed and is really irrelevant. This is the relevance right here. Right? So, Guccifer 2.0, on June 14, 2016, the DNC and its cyber response team announced that the breach of the DNC network and suspected theft of DNC documents. In the statement, the cyber response team alleged that Russian, Russian state-sponsored spons actors were responsible for the breach. Apparently, in response to the announcement on June 15th, GRE officers used the persona Guccifer 2.0. In the hours leading up to the launch, right, just more bullshit, right, opinion. Hmm, what else? Right, so again, there's this wonderful... So, and Julian Assange is sitting in jail right now. That's where we need him. We need him now. And here's, again, the use of WikiLeaks. So you saw, now you read where Seth Rich enters, right? How that information was actually given to, to Julian Assange. There's other stuff in here that talks about Julian Assange communicating with Guccifer 2.0 and DC Leaks. I don't know anything about that stuff, right? Now... It does, I mean, did, did Julian Assange, did Julian Assange use Seth Rich as a scapegoat? I mean, it, it does, that's what this wants you to believe, right? It wants you to say, oh, no, no, see how, how, how thorough we, we worked and DC leaks and Guccifer gave the information to, to Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. They never say how the information was transferred. There's no, there's no evidence whatsoever of how any of it was transferred. 
And all it says is that Julian Assange never gave any indication that only through through a trail, through Twitter and other stuff, were they able to say that Julian Assange uh, was the, you know, that the, that the Russians gave the stuff to Julian Assange. So, all right, so that's my first read on this, right? It, it just, it's, there's a lot to it. And it's interesting that, that Seth Rich is mentioned in the, in the documentation at the very tail end of the, that section of the investigation, did the Russians hack the DNC servers, right? There's no real, again, we still haven't seen any real evidence, right? It's just, it, and, and the guy, the one guy that can clarify it and the one guy that was voicing it, the actual publisher of the material, he, they stick him in a box and hide him away. You see, you see the tragedy involved? Do You see the tragedy? The, they're attacking the publisher of this information two weeks before this release, and putting him in a cell away from away from the public so he can't speak. It's it's just the ultimate it's just the ultimate in in um, hypocrisy, the ultimate in in uh, American aggression. That right? you want the truth? You want the truth, get Julian Assange and put him on the stand. Let him let him talk, right? Give pardon him and let's hear what he has to say. Pardon the guy, let him out. Let's hear what he has to say. Right? He could tell you what was happening. Where's the hundred? The big takeaway is if someone fishes me, right? I would remember that. I'd be like, fuck, you know, I get these emails, you know, trying to trying to get me to give give up my password, right? I would remember something like that. Where is the hundreds and hundreds of employees, the DNC employees that got these emails? Where are they? Where I never heard a single person ever say it. Right? Well, the only one that 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 seems to have had any connection was Seth Rich. So again, my view, it still points to a leak, not a hack. And this fabrication of all this all these Russian military operatives, you know, dancing around inside of the the uh, the DNC server, leaving their footprints, it's just it's bullshit. It just seems it seems very bullshitty to me. It seemed bullshitty then and it's now that we've seen the report and uh well, you know, a, a first read, first day. Um, it just seems still bullshitty, right? As far as the collusion and, and um, you know, obstruction of justice, I'm not even going to touch it because I don't care. Right? It's stupid. Right? If, if this is the essence of the argument, did the Russians hack the, the, the DNC servers? If not, an American released it. And that is the real issue, that that a, a brave soul leaked this information to the public and it had a profound effect on the election because it showed that John Podesta, Hillary Clinton, Robbie Mook, and the rest of them were cheating. Donna Brazile, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, cheating the Democratic Party. And we don't want that to happen again, right? So here's the focus. So uh, first, first round, if, um, if you want to help support this channel, Sign, uh, become a Patreon. Thank you for as little as two dollars a month. Uh, two, three dollars a month. I'll send you some free stickers. You have a good time. PayPal if you want to make a one-time contribution. If you don't want your name or or address connected to it, just leave it blank. And I don't know who you are, man. I don't know. I just know you're a supporter, and I love you to death. Right? So, so please do that for me. Marcus Conti reporting. <laughs>